Hi folks, welcome back to the B29 restoration project. So while I've got some stuff and some glue curing on the stubs for the horizontal stab on the back so we can finish making these removable, I'm going to go ahead and start prepping the stabilizer balsa skins and getting those all cut to shape and ready to sheet this foam core that we have. Uh, there's a little bit of work that still needs done to this foam core. The current rails are set up for a quarter scale servo like what was originally set in it and it also needs uh, the outboard stab tube socket support rib made and then I also need to bore the holes for the stab tube sockets. So that's some stuff we got to do eventually but right now we're going to work on just getting the skins made. So the skins for this are going to be 8th inch contest grade balsa which the airplane is pretty much sheeted in entirely. The main reason for contest grade balsa is to really just weight savings. And an airplane this big, every gram is useful to save. So first thing you want to do is just measure the stuff. I typically like to do a half to three quarters of an inch larger. So that makes this one about 28 and a half inches wide, or I should say long. I'm going to just... Make some and then uh, we're going to go five and a half and this one I'm going straight from the trailing edge and then a half inch past the leading edge. Same thing here at the root and that would make that about ten and a half close enough. So now that we've got that situated, we can pull out our, our our balsa wood sheets. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut them all to the correct length that we want. Okay, now that we've got all of our sheets cut to length. What we want to do now is we want to take a long sanding block and you want to true the edges. So you basically you're just, you're gonna sand the edge that way they're as straight as possible. So when you go to seam them together, you don't end up with any gaps. Sometimes you can get lucky and you can find sheets that if you flip them, actually kinda come together very nicely like this works pretty good there's a couple little divots here on the edges so we'll just make our life easier and we'll just true them all up so for sanding block like i said i really like the permagrit tools unfortunately this one's not really long enough but i can actually make it work anyways you just got to be a little bit on this the safe side and not try to do anything crazy another option is you can just take a four foot level or a piece of aluminum 90 degree angle, put some sticky back sandpaper on it, and then you can actually just run your sheet back and forth it, like so, until you get it to where it's it's trued up. I said I like the permagrit tools because they work very nice. There's a coarse side, and then there's a fine side, and if you have a lot of material to take off, the coarse side works very quickly at removing it. Okay, now that we've got the edges of our sheets all trued up, or at least they should be, yeah, we put them together and they, I mean, those are perfect. So now what I like to do is I like to go and just flex the sheets and kind of grade them for how well they, they bend. The ones that don't bend much are typically the ones that I'll put towards the trailing edge of the wing since it's more flat. And the ones that bend a lot better 
will go towards the leading edge since that's where the, the majority of the curvature is. Unfortunately, it seems I have picked a bunch of sheets that don't want to curve or bend very easily at all. So, but these two are definitely the more stiff of the bunch. So, yeah, that's probably about like that. So, hard, stiffest to loosest, we'll say. So now the whole, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna make up sheet blanks. What we're gonna do here is we're just going to literally line up the edges to get a nice tight seam. This one's just off just ever so slightly, but we flip the sheet over. And there we go. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take just regular old masking tape. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, just literally the cheapest stuff you can get. And we are going to run the masking tape right down the center or right centered over the seam of the two of the sheets. Okay, now that we've got our stabilizer skins all taped together, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some wood glue. In this case, I'm using the Gorilla wood glue, and I've got it in one of my little uh, small squeeze bottles with a needle. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run a, a little bead of glue right here down the, down the seam of this sheet. careful of is when you do this make sure you're doing it on a table surface that doesn't have a lot of uh, bumps and whatnot in it because you will gouge the, the sheeting especially if you're using contest grade balsa so now I'm just gonna take out my heat gun it's just a, a normal heat gun not a monocoat one or anything and I am going to just run across those seams and get the glue to dry. One way you can tell if you're going, putting too much heat in one area, you'll actually see the wood glue will start to, to turn a really dark brown and burn. Do you see that? Move to the next spot. Now that you've got both of these skins made up, you could do a preliminary sanding on them before you even put them onto this the foam cores. This all, this method also works for if you're sheeting balsa wood wings in one large piece. You can do this exact same thing. And the preliminary sanding, I'm just gonna go over it with, I believe some 180 or 220. That is probably very worn out. But I'm just gonna go across the grain and across the seams. And this is just to level out the surface. Now we're going to get started and make our uh, 
cut them to size to fit the, the, the stab itself. both of our horizontal stab skins made up we'll take this one and do the same thing inside bottom put some chicken scratch on there that nobody will be able to read including myself in 20 minutes and now we've got both stab skins set up so the next thing we've got to do is i've got to get this stab core modified for the outboard rib and the bore holes for the actual stab tube sockets to go in so we can't really go any further with sheathing this until i get this done in order to get that done i've got to get the removable stab core or uh, removable stab sockets and tubes in place in the center section and then we can get back to doing this and this one and the the left stab will kind of go hand in hand with each other so through the, the power of editing, this will either continue on into finishing the rest of this, or I'll just make another video. We'll, we'll see how long this video ends up lasting. So see you later.